Hello, you're watching The Wire. Today is the 7th of April and this is the daily COVID-19 updates bulletin. As of Tuesday morning, 4,421 people in India have been affected by the new coronavirus. There has been a dip in the number of new reported cases. 140 new cases were reported today as compared to 704 cases that were reported on the 6th of April. Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Andhra Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh continue to report a large number of positive cases. Bhilwara, however, which was one of the coronavirus hotspots, has reported no new case since the last seven days. Two days ago, the US President Donald Trump requested Prime Minister Modi to release hydroxychloroquine, a drug that India's top medical research body, the ICMR, has recommended to India's frontline health workers and doctors. This is also the drug which was banned from all exports as the Indian government was stockpiling it. But after the US President's request and a subsequent threat of retaliation, the Indian government today went ahead with lifting the export ban on the drug for countries who are hardest hit by the pandemic. India is the largest manufacturer of hydroxychloroquine. There have been multiple research reports that suggest that it is an unproven drug in the prevention of COVID-19 Yet the ICMR has recommended it as a prophylactic drug. Cardiologists have also warned about the side effects of this drug. America's leading virologist Dr. Anthony Foshi has urged caution in using the drug too. He further said that various studies need to be done which prove if this intervention is truly a safe and effective one. So why has the ICMR recommended it and why does Donald Trump want it? I have with me Priyanka Pula, a freelance journalist and a science writer who has been reporting on the coronavirus outbreak for The Wire Science. She's here to answer our questions and to discuss India's use of HCQ for preventing and treating COVID-19. Thanks Priyanka for taking out the time. My first question to you is that when we say that HCQ remains an unproven drug, what does it mean? What we mean is that every time before a drug is approved by any regulatory authority, say the Indian drug regulator or the FDA, it usually has to go through something called a phase three human clinical trial. So that means that the drug has to be given to human beings and then you see, uh, you look for adverse effects and then you look for whether it's effective and then you compare them with people who have not taken the drug. So all these steps are important, right? You have to do it in humans. Uh, it has to be compared with people not taking the drug. So that's called a control trial. And then the people who get the drug and who don't get the drug have to be chosen randomly. So that's the gold standard for proving the effectiveness of the drug or, or, or rather uh, evidence for the effectiveness of the drug. Now, in hydroxychloroquine's case, this, is, this has not happened yet. And the only data we have basically comes from studies in petri dishes, right? In the sense, what what they've done is that they have tested the drug in in cell lines, uh, uh, human or you know animal cell lines, and there it has shown some efficacy. But there are just hundreds of drugs which show that kind of efficacy in petri dishes, but never make their way two clinical trials. Hydroxychloroquine has shown efficacy in the past against Ebola, against chikungunya, against dengue, against HIV in, in petri dishes, in vitro studies, right? This has happened before. But then when people followed up with human clinical trials, they did not find that effect. Basically, a study in petri dish really doesn't mean much. The other thing I wanted to point out is that there are some human studies for hydroxychloroquine, but these are like of, of very poor quality. There was a French study, but there were issues with that. And then there was, again, just two days ago, there was a study from Shanghai, which was a well-designed study. It was, it was randomized and there was a control arm, etc. cetera. Uh, but that did not find any impact of hydroxychloroquine. So when you have so much conflicting evidence, it essentially means there is no evidence. So on what basis has ICMR recommended it? So this is a pandemic situation where you have no drugs at all to basically treat COVID-19. So it's sort of a desperate situation. And this kind of thing does tend to happen. It's maybe it's even justified. And you have early evidence that it, it works, right? You have, uh, you know it works on a petri dish to begin with. You could even argue that ICMR 
justified in recommending the drug for sick people because if for really sick people because in in those cases you know the the risk from the illness itself is so high that even if a small chance that the drug works maybe it's worth trying like maybe the patient would agree to do this the more controversial decision was for icmr to recommend this as a prophylactic which means to recommend it to healthy people as a preventive for covid-19 you know these people don't really need it right now there are other ways to prevent the illness which is personal protective equipment so that, that to me is far more controversial so there are a lot of questions about whether icmr should have done it and a lot of people say it wasn't a justified decision at all but there is also this factor that you're in the middle of the pandemic you need a drug uh, you you are you're expecting the numbers of cases to blow up and then if you have healthcare workers falling sick then they're going to make a whole lot of other people sick is there a due process being followed across the country for those who are taking at cq yeah so uh, what is happening is that um, in in the case of the prophylactic as a prophylactic uh, which icmr is recommending for healthcare workers saying that people should not take it without prescription from a registered medical practitioner right and it also lists some contraindications that says that if you have retinopathy or if you have hypertension you shouldn't take the drug so icmr makes that fairly clear but icmr says that go to a doctor even if you're a doctor taking the drug go to a doctor and get a prescription mm-hmm. uh and i'm not sure that is happening uh i i know for a fact that state governments are giving it to people and mass including nurses and doctors so like not everybody if not all of them would be aware of all the issues surrounding these drugs not all of them would have done a risk benefit looked at their own health history etc so there is a due process in place on paper but i'm not sure that it's being followed across the country could hcq actually make healthy people more vulnerable to covid-19 Yeah so uh, while I was reporting my story there was one uh, American rheumatologist who uh, pointed out that there is there is one study which shows that uh, in uh, it was a study in people lupus patients and hydroxychloroquine has been used as therapy for patients of lupus for a long time the study shows that they are unable to produce uh, the production of an immune molecule called interferon alpha is impaired in their bodies and that plays a very key role in in, immune, in immunity against viral illnesses right like covid-19 now if that is the case when healthy person takes the drug uh, if a healthy person takes hcq and their body is not able to produce that molecule in time then that might theoretically uh, actually make them more vulnerable because your body is not able to fight off covid-19 unless you do a clinical trial you wouldn't know for example in the case of chikungunya there were petri dish studies there were cells uh, in vitro studies which showed that hcq works against chikungunya but when people did the same kind of study in in non human primates they found that it was actually making the chikungunya worse so there was greater viremia so this kind of thing happens right even after you find a positive result in a petri dish and then you go and do the study in say animals or humans you might find something completely else so yes there is a chance if you go by the study in lupus that it might actually make you more vulnerable what are the side effects that doctors have warned the world about Yeah so it's actually rheumatologists who use this drug really often for autoimmune illnesses like rheumatic arthritis and lupus they use it a lot people take it for years and years and all the rheumatologists i spoke to said that it's actually a largely a safe drug they consider it a safe drug but there are in 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 a small percentage of people it can for example lead to retinopathy which is the the retina of the eye is damaged it can actually damage your vision even smaller percentage of people a very tiny percentage of people it can lead to heart electrical system abnormalities that's a very small percentage in fact i wasn't able to find a number for what what risk there is of this heart heart issue right it's mm-hmm. probably um for example another drug called azithromycin is 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 a much stronger it, it, it's far more likely to cause this heart issue and the risk in the case of azithromycin is out of 1 million doses of that drug only 47 people have that issue the heart issue the arrhythmia right 
which can actually cause death. And in hydroxychloroquine's case, that's even smaller. So there are risks, which is your eyesight could get damaged, or you could have this, or there are liver and kidney issues, but these are small risks. The reason I'm saying this is that patients who are on this drug for lupus and rheumatic arthritis shouldn't stop taking the drug because it's in the news now and everybody's talking about the side effects, mm -hmm. right? For them, their doctors are probably screening them. Can we say that HCQ has become the best bet for the world in this pandemic? So here's the thing, a lot of people are using uh, this drug as prophylaxis, not just in India, but I think it's happening in other countries too. It's only in India that uh, government agencies recommending it, which I believe has led to like really large scale usage. That is, is a worrying issue if you ask me, because when you say just picks up like that, there are, it's just, uh, the chances that people will use it without thinking are far higher. It's like a stamp, stamp of approval from the government, right? Mm. Uh, because I was recently speaking to a doctor, a very senior doctor, and he said that everybody in their hospital was taking hydroxychloroquine because it is mandatory now, right? Mm. That is not true. ICMR is only recommending it. It's not saying it's mandatory. So to me, that impression which some doctors are getting is... Uh, in, and, and also you know that the drug is not effective, so it's it's an individual decision. So to me, maybe it's all right if you individually take the decision after full knowledge, but I'm more concerned the, about the fact that a government agency is recommending it on such a large scale. One doctor told me that in Guwahati, everybody is taking the drug because we don't have enough personal protective equipment, right? The prices of personal protective equipment, masks, um, gowns, aprons, everything has zoomed up. So you don't know if you will have enough of it when it comes, when, when COVID-19 actually comes. So you're now preparing it in advance, you're anxious, and that makes them vulnerable to irrational decisions. There has been no positive case in Bhilwara since the last seven days. And we have read reports which say that this drug was given to healthcare workers and doctors in Bhilwara. Whereas we've reported in The Wire Science that a doctor actually lost his life in Guwahati after taking the drug. What does this suggest? Did the drug get prescribed with due process after screening doctors in Bhilwara but not in Guwahati? No, I don't know what due process is being followed in Bhilwara because I was told that they're not screening everybody and everybody's taking it and basically thousands of people have gotten it in, in Rajasthan. Uh, and the fact that they have not had any new cases probably has nothing to do with the drug because they've followed this massive contact tracing, quarantining, home isolation exercise, which is what you do, basically. They, they did everything right. They did everything as it was on paper, which is probably why they don't have new cases because they stopped transmission. If hydroxychloroquine was that, that effective, lupus and uh, rheumatic arthritis patients who take hydroxychloroquine all their life should not get the, get the illness. But there are a lot of patients with RA and lupus who are getting COVID-19. So uh, I don't think it, it would be completely wrong to conclude that it is because of hydroxychloroquine. You, you, you'd have to, uh, there are ways to, f the best way to figure out whether it's working is a randomized uh, control trial. Yeah, and then about the Gahati doctor, uh, did the doctor get prescribed? Very little is known in his case. Mm -hmm. Apparently he had hypertension, which, if you have hypertension, it's contraindicated in the sense that ICMR says that you should take HCQ hydroxychloroquine with caution. Problem is that nobody really knows what happened because he took it on his own. It was not his hospital which was recommending the drug. A lot of people took, took it took it on their own and nobody has not been investigated. Nobody has asked the family if he took any other drug which might have interfered, whether he had any underlying health conditions. There are certain people who might be more vulnerable to hydroxychloroquine. He might have been one of them. But the point is, typically when a death like this occurs, it should be investigated. Uh, that's what ICMR itself says. ICMR says in its guidelines that if there are adverse effects, it has to be reported. So the protocol is to investigate, and that has not happened. So, so we know nothing, basically, about that case. And that's very unfortunate because there's so many thousands of people taking the drug. And when somebody dies, if you're not even investigating it, I think we should question that. In your knowledge, where else is this drug being used outside of India? 
my understanding is nobody is recommending but a lot of people are taking people in the US are taking it prophylactically healthcare workers and i did come across some literature on iran there were the doctors in iran who published a paper saying it can be given prophylactically etc there are doctors in italy who have published saying it might be a good agent but i don't know if this has translated to policy anywhere considering that the demand of the drug has risen so much are clinical trials underway yeah there are there are clinical trials happening. happening right now so there at least a couple i saw for hydroxychloroquine as prophylaxis as a preventive the data is going to come soon thank you so much for joining us in this conversation priyanka you're welcome that's all for today i hope you've liked this episode thank you for watching keep reading the wired in and stay safe